Well, it finally happened. It finally came and went. The season finale of Game of Thrones happened last night. I watched it, and here are my thoughts. Um, this is easily, easily the worst season finale I've ever seen. This this season finale is so bad to a series, it makes the season finale of The Sopranos look like Lawrence of Arabia. Seriously. I mean, Tony Soprano sitting at a, a booth, and then you hear a toilet flush, and it looks up, and the whole screen goes blank, and that's it. You don't know if he lives or dies. That was better. That was better than what happened at the end of Game of Thrones. The writers of this built up a humongous climax for the very end. We were going to see Jon Snow uh, go head-to-head against Daenerys. Who's going to get the Iron Throne? Every prediction that I had, every single one, everything that happened with the dwarf, with uh, Grey Worm, with Jon Snow, with the dragon, with everybody was wrong. Every single hot choice that they could have taken, they didn't. They took the worst, dumbest choice out of all of them. Out of all of them. I mean, they ruined the Jon Snow character. They ruined Daenerys. They ruined the dwarf character. They ruined the freaking dragon. The dragon. They ruined the dragon. They ruined the build-up with, with the tension between Grey Worm and Jon Snow. That went nowhere. It was ridiculous. And on top of it, the writers who have done a pretty good job up to this point, with the exception of maybe a couple episodes, the writers have just been given the trilogy to Star Wars. So Disney's going to be doing another trilogy, because they got to make more money. They haven't made, you know, a $9 trillion yet off of Star Wars. They gave these guys the new trilogy. And I'm just wondering, like, is this going to be another Ryan Johnson thing, where they give it to a guy and they take it away? Because of the backlash. I mean, this was so bad. If you took somebody who took a writing class, a screenwriting class for a week, they could have come up with something better than this. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not joking around. It was that bad. Um, okay, so spoiler alerts. If you don't want to hear how it ends, then plug your ears and just click subscribe or click subscribe and get the heck out of here and go somewhere else and listen. Because I, I got to vent because this is so. This is an abomination. It really is. Okay, so throughout the entire series, there's been a buildup between this season, especially between Daenerys and Jon Snow. Who's going to take the Iron Throne? It's been revealed that Jon Snow is not actually a Stark. He's not the bastard child of the Stark. He's actually uh, Daenerys's nephew. So she's... He is one of her brother's sons, and she finds out about that, making him the, since he's a guy, he's a male, making him the rightful heir to the Iron Throne, not her. So all this build up throughout the, all the previous seasons where she is like the heir and, you know, she magically cannot be burned in fire and she has these three dragon eggs and they turn into giant dragons and she's the dragon queen and she's the breaker of chains and all this stuff that's supposed to lead up to her being the queen. She finds out, holy crap, I did all this. I saved Jon Snow, not realizing he's actually the one going to get it. So all of our hopes and dreams come crashing down with this secret. And if it gets out, it's going to totally destroy everything that she built everything that she wanted to have happen. So there's a tension there. There's a tension. It's like, okay, so she loves him. I mean, this is Game of Thrones. Forget about the fact they're related because that is just doesn't mean too much in Game of Thrones. There's a lot of incest and stuff that goes on. So anyway, so she loves him. She really cares about the guy, but she's like caught because she's like, okay, if... I let him live, and the and the the seeker gets out. Then everybody's gonna want him to be king because everybody respects him anyway. He defeated the dead army. He died and came back to life. He's been working on the wall. He led the wildlings to victory. I mean, he's the man. He's the he's the dude. He's the cool guy. Everybody likes him. Everybody respects him. She's just a blonde chick 
half albino chick who rides on a dragon. Without the dragon, she's nothing. She's she can't do anything. And so, you know, the secret finally gets out. So people find out that he actually is the the heir to the Iron Throne. So then she's really screwed because she's like, okay, so if I let him live and he doesn't take the Iron Throne and I do, <clears throat> every decision I make, people are going to second guess because they're going to be like, hey, you know what? Jon Snow wouldn't have done that. Jon Snow would have done a better job. And it's just going to undermine her ability and her power. But if she lets him, if he ends up stepping up and taking the throne, it's going to destroy all of her hopes and dreams of being the queen and being the leader of the Seven Kingdoms and all that hoopla. And lastly, if she kills him, if she has him assassinated, you know, poisoned or beheaded or whatever, then no one is ever going to listen to her. Then she's going to end up being like her father, the Mad King, who was a total nut job, who just killed people left and right. He was drunk on power. So she's really not double screwed. She's triple screwed because there's really nothing she can do except give the Iron Throne to Jon Snow. So she has to swallow her pride and show leadership and allow the rightful heir to take the throne. So it's like this whole time we've been wondering, is this actually going to happen? Is is she going to do the right thing? Is she going to do the wrong thing? We see good. We see bad in her. You know, what do we do? And then also we see a buildup with Grey Worm, her right-hand man, who's one of the Unsullied, who's kind of screwed up in the head. He sees Jon Snow as a threat to his own power and status as well, because he went from being a slave warrior to being like the, the the top general guy in the whole Seven Kingdoms. So he knows if Jon Snow takes control, he's not going to get his power. He's not going to get his position. And so, you know, there's a lot of tension there. But what ends up happening is, you know, Jon Snow sees that Daenerys has lost her, her, she's off her rocker, she's lost her marbles, she's getting crazier and crazier, she's drunk with power, she loves the drumbeat of war, because she likes seeing people suffer and cower down to her, a lot like her father, the Mad King. He sees that in her, but he doesn't want to believe it. So he goes to the imp, he goes to the dwarf, and the dwarf tells him, like, look, she really believes that she's right. She believes that no matter what, She's going to lead everybody to heaven on earth. And wouldn't you, if you really believe that, if you really believe that heaven was possible on earth, wouldn't you destroy, wouldn't you kill anyone who tried to stay, stand in your way? And then Jon Snow just kind of takes a step back and goes, holy crap, I think maybe you're right. And then the imp goes, including your sisters, including the Stark girls. So he's just like, he knows that he's going to eventually, if he doesn't kill her, if she doesn't show that she can show mercy, he's going to have to kill her and he's going to have to save his siblings. Otherwise, she eventually will, will attack them and say, are you with your queen, me, or are you with these girls? And that's just going to cause problems and he's not going to have a chance to stop her. So he goes in to confront her and he asks her, like, like, you know, what is your goal? What is your plan? She's like, I want to make a better world. You know, it's like one. Of, she's basically a globalist. She's like, I want to go into these other countries, kill their leaders and liberate them. And yeah, maybe some of them are going to die, too. But it's all going to be good. We're all going to be perfect. And then he just looks at her and he's like, are you serious? Like, do you really believe that you're going to make the world a perfect place? And she's like, yeah. And then he just looks at her and he's like, well, what about the people that like how the world is? What about the people that don't want to, you know, upend everything? And she said, well, that's not their decision. And they're going to be the ones destroyed, too. And then he realizes that he has to make that choice. He has to stop her. He can't just stand by anymore and nod his head and just say, you are my queen. He's going to actually have to actually make the, the tough decision and so sacrifice himself. Otherwise, millions of other people are going to die. So what does he do? In the, one of the most anticlimactic deaths. He kisses her and says, you were my queen, right next to the Iron Throne. And then he stabs her right through the heart, and she dies. I mean, I, I'm just like, you know, I was playing out all the scenarios of how maybe she died. How they could make it climactic. And in my head, I was thinking, you know what? They're going to they're gonna execute the dwarf. The dwarf then knowing is going to die. Because he kind of had, that character has to die. It just makes it, it just makes it... It raises the stakes. Another major character is going to have to die. So 
before the dwarf dies, he yells out, Jon Snow is the rightful heir to the throne. That's how I would fix it. Everybody hears it, and people are saying, is it true? Is it true? And then Daenerys says, it's a lie, he's a liar. And then Grey Worm kills him. And then Jon Snow now knows, I have a target on my back. I can't hide it anymore. And then maybe him and Grey Worm go at it. Him and Grey Worm would have to fight it out. We'd have to see their actual fighting ability, you know, see their skill. And then Jon Snow would have to kill Grey Worm. And then uh, maybe one of Jon Snow's uh, sisters kills him, you know, maybe like Anna Stark, or I'm sorry, Arya, I always get these names wrong, Arya Stark k kills uh, Daenerys, you know, like she uses one of the fake identities from the uh, faceless god and kills Daenerys you know, or something like that, you know, you would have to incorporate more people into it. But they didn't. They didn't do that. I mean, and then, and then it has to end with Jon Snow stepping on the Iron Throne, people bowing to him, the the reluctant king, the reluctant hero, and it's a ha it's a tale happily ever after. You know, he he ends up, you know, marrying his queen, having children, and then you know maybe it ends with like the stained glass window drawing of him or a painting of him or a statue of him you know inside the the seven kingdoms and they talk about the the tale of the man who died and came back to life defeated the army of the dead and then took his rightful place on the iron throne you know almost like a biblical tale but it didn't do that and i was i just was like all of this struggle that this poor guy went through all of it being a bastard his whole life people saying he's worth nothing uh, being, being shunned, having to be at the wall with, or all the other, you know, delinquents are and criminals and serve, you know, where it's cold, basically you're like in the Arctic and, you know, it's miserable and he's there and he ends up becoming a leader there and surviving the giant climb of, of the wall, of the ice wall. If you remember in the earlier seasons, he survives that. Nobody thought he would. Um, bringing one of the dead uh, to, to the Lannister Queen, you know, and them losing a dragon to try to get everybody involved in the fight to the dead. And then he ends up defeating the dead. And then he ends up uh, winning the war, the big war. And then he ends, I mean, it's just, there, there's all this stuff that he does. And his repayment is and this is what really ticks ticked me off. I, I just couldn't believe this. The in reality, the imp is he's a they put him on trial. Okay, Jon Snow after killing Daenerys is in prison, like he's just some regular schlub who doesn't mean anything. Even though he's like the be, the 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 best person in the entire Seven Kingdoms, he's in prison. Uh. Ty Ty Tyrone Lannister, he's standing there, and the person that he says that should be king at all these people is Bran Stark. Bran freaking Stark, the kid in the wheelchair. The, you know, the kid with the glazed over look on his face who talks to the, the weird three-eyed raven. That kid, the, the kid that just stares off in the distance like there's something wrong with him. Him. They decide to give it to him. And what's so weird about this, there's like this weird popular vote message in it, because one of the characters, um, it was uh, Samwell. Samwell's like, well, well, how about instead of letting all the uh, elders and noblemen vote, everybody vote? So then everybody looks at him and just goes, ha ha, that's crazy. And then they kind of move on. I'm just like, are you freaking serious? Like, what the heck? Like, it, that... That line in particular took me out of it because I'm just like, oh my god, dude! Like this is just, this is just going SJW. And then they have Bran Stark be the king. He's unable to have any children, so they totally destroyed the whole idea of a lineage, their heritage, their I mean, their history for the most part. I mean, if anything, he would be like the scholar or the teacher to the Seven Kingdoms. He would be Jon Snow's hand you know that would that would make sense he's the hand of the king not the king and 
Oh, I mean, and then in all his supposed wisdom, because, you know, because he bound with that like tree of knowledge and now he knows everything in the past, present or future. Bran Stark then banishes Jon Snow back to the wall. So Jon Snow starts at the wall. He goes through hell, literally. Does everything you could possibly imagine. Gives the Seven Kingdoms back to the people. I mean, he really does. And makes the final sacrifice, sacrifices himself by killing Daenerys. He's the only person capable of doing it. She's got a dragon. She's got an army of like a million people. Nobody's going to be able to do it. He does it. And what what happens? He ends up, not the imp. The imp stays alive. So the imp is going to die. The imp tells him, kill Daenerys. He does it. The imp gets to stay in, you know, Malibu, in, in the the sunny place. He gets to be a, the hand again to Bran Stark. Bran Stark tells Jon Snow, thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. And then they send him, they banish him back to the wall, all the way back to the north. And the reason why is because the Unsullied hate him because he killed their queen and they just don't want to cause any problems anymore. And it's almost like because he's no longer a bastard, he's actually the rightful heir, that he can't be there. So it's it's like it's the it's like a reverse problem. So in the beginning, Jon Snow was at the wall. And he wasn't born into any family at all, any decent family, because he was a bastard. It didn't count. So because he had no lineage and he was a nobody, he was at the wall. Now he's back at the wall because he's not a bastard, because he's not a nobody, because he's a somebody, because he actually deserves to be on the on the Iron Throne. So these people, because they don't get their way, change the rules around after the fact, after he did all the work. And then he's sent back to the exact same place. If I was him, I'd be like, screw you people. I am not going back. Not going to happen. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care how many of the Unsullied are ticked off. It ain't going to happen. But that's what it ends. It ends, the whole series ends with Arya on a ship. And she goes to the uncharted territories um, of the realm. So, I don't know, maybe they're going to do a spinoff of that, which could be interesting, but that's what they're going to do. And then, it ends with Jon Snow re-teaming up with the Wildlings up at the Wall in the north. And he's just walking, he's just riding on his horse into the woods. You know, and I don't know what they're doing because it's like, the, the army of the dead is gone, so there's no reason to have a wall now. And he's just, now he's just like basically in the Arctic on a horse with a bunch of Wildlings. And he has no power or anything. And it, it just I just takes me off so bad. Because you have expectations. I didn't create the expectations. The writers did. Writers gave me expectations of how it was going to end. And they don't do it. There's no statue of him. There's no writings of Jon Snow. There's no tribute to him. Nothing. There's no song that they people sing when they're drinking. Nothing. He gets absolutely nothing, and that's what's that's what ticks me off, and that's what ticks off millions of Game of Thrones fans because it's like, you know, you expect when somebody shows self-sacrifice, when somebody puts in the work, when somebody tries hard, when somebody does what they're supposed to do, when they're the noble man, they're supposed to get what they have earned, and he earned the power. The kid in a wheelchair didn't earn it. He got thrown. He got pushed out of a, out of a uh, window by Jamie Lannister. Broke his back. It's sad, but somebody else pushed him out. He fell, and he got weird visions. And then he bound with a tree. And then he can talk to birds. And then supposedly that makes him qualified to lead in politics. I mean that just blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. A kid's like 17 years old, probably never had a job in his life. Never wrote it. I mean, I, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's just, I, I keep trying to make sense out of it, but there's no use. But anyway, if I'm missing something, let me know. I guarantee I am. Suppose, oh, supposedly there were bottles of water. So bottled water that made it in the shot. So in the previous episode, 
Um, Denarius had a uh, Starbucks cup of coffee. Well, I guess there are bottles of water now. So there you go. Anyways, if I'm missing anything, let me know. Let me know. Were you as ticked off as I was? I wanted to throw the remote. I was so surprised. Honestly, if I would have woke up with, you know, my head sewn to the carpet, I, would, I wouldn't have been less surprised. Seriously. If I would have got woken up by getting hit in the nuts with a wolf ball bat, I wouldn't have been as surprised as this. I was like, what the heck? If you were equally surprised, let me know. I'm interested in your thoughts. Do you think this is the worst episode of the whole series? Do you think this is the worst season finale of any major show? Worse than Seinfeld? Worse than The Sopranos? Let me know. I'm interested. And as always, if you want to hear these rants, if you want to get more reviews of mine, just click subscribe. And I hope you do. And I'll see you in the future. Bye-bye.